Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is, but we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Folks, today I want to talk about what happened overnight, actually just a few hours ago, near Damascus, Syria, and how we are on the verge of the prophecy against Damascus being fulfilled. For those of you that do not know what I'm talking about when I just mentioned the prophecy against Damascus, when you go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 17, verse 1, over 2,500 years ago, the prophet Isaiah records the following. The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Now, very clearly here, something is going to happen to Damascus, Syria, that causes it to become a ruinous heap. Now, there's parts of Damascus right now that are in pretty bad shape. However, Damascus right now, it is not a ruinous heap. There is actually subscribers on this very channel that live in and around Damascus, Syria. And they will even tell you that Damascus is not a ruinous heap right now. Yes, there's parts of it that are bad. But this prophecy very clearly states that a time is coming when Damascus will become a heap of ruins. And it even tells you when it will occur. When you go to Isaiah chapter 17, verse 14, the prophet Isaiah records the following. And behold, at evening tide trouble, and before the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, and the lot of them that rob us. So very clearly here, something is going to happen overnight in Damascus, Syria, that causes it to be a ruinous heap. Now let's talk about what just occurred overnight near Damascus, Syria. This is just in from the Times of Israel. Syria says soldiers severely wounded in Israeli airstrikes near Damascus. Let me read some of this to you folks. Israel carried out airstrikes near Damascus early Wednesday, just a, a few hours ago, wounding a Syrian soldier. Explosions were heard in the Syrian capital of Damascus early Wednesday. The UK-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said the targets were military warehouse, bu warehouses belonging to Iranian militias near the Damascus airport and an area southwest of the capital. The observatory reported that violent explosions were heard in Damascus after midnight on Wednesday. At around 1.05 a.m., the Israeli enemy carried out an aerial aggression from the direction of the occupied Golan Heights, targeting several positions southwest of Damascus. SANA cited a military source as saying, The source did not provide details on the targets and this said the strikes severely wounded a soldier and caused material damage. Folks, if you've been paying attention over the last couple years especially, there has been a massive increase of Israeli airstrikes in and surrounding Damascus, Syria. And why are we seeing this massive increase of these airstrikes? Well, it's very simple. Damascus is a hub of terror that Iran and its proxies, specifically Hezbollah, use to transfer and move weapons in my opinion, some nuclear material now, around the Damascus area to use against the nation of Israel. And don't forget, folks, over the last year, there has now been approximately 40 Iranian cargo planes that have landed at Damascus International Airport. And what do you think is on those planes, folks? It's weapons and other things that they're moving around moving to these different warehouses, these weapon warehouses, 
again, to use against the nation of Israel. And here's what's huge. We keep hearing about how now Iran has enough enriched uranium, I believe, for several nuclear bombs, and it's just getting even crazier in the coming days and weeks. And Israel's like, yeah, you've crossed a red line. We've got to do something. Uh, so it's at a critical point right now. But we know that Iran keeps saying, oh, they have enough enriched uranium, blah, blah, blah. And we know Damascus is, again, a hub of terror that Iran and its proxies are using to transfer all these weapons, these missiles, to use against Israel. But also, think about this. Who's to say they're not moving nuclear stuff around Damascus, Syria? So it's only a matter of time before something gets hit during one of these airstrikes and this prophecy will be fulfilled. Here's something else I want you to think about. We know that there's been several generals that have come forth and said that there is nuclear material underground in Damascus, Syria. And we also know Syria's president, Bashar al-Assad, has nuclear material in Damascus, Syria. So it's only a matter of time again when Iran and its proxies continue to use Damascus as this hub of terror, and they're moving all this stuff around, and we already know that there's nuclear stuff in Damascus, Syria, something is going to get hit. And this prophecy will be fulfilled, and it will happen overnight. Now, I want to make something very clear. I am not saying with 100% certainty that the destruction of Damascus will occur from an Israeli airstrike. Maybe it's something else that will cause Damascus to become a heap of ruins. But all I'm doing, folks, is I'm connecting the dots with you here. Again, Damascus has become a hub of terror that Iran and its proxies, especially Hezbollah, are using to move all these weapons and possibly nuclear material around the Damascus area to use against the nation of Israel. And that's why we continue to see a massive number of Israeli airstrikes occurring in and around Damascus, Syria. And it is only a matter of time before something gets hit that shouldn't get hit and this prophecy will be fulfilled. Folks, we could go to bed tonight and wake up tomorrow morning and this prophecy could be fulfilled. Just look at what's happening there right now, especially as Iran continues to say it has enough enriched uranium for several, nu several nuclear weapons. We're at a, a critical point right now this, the prophecy against Damascus, make no mistake about it, it is imminent. It could occur at any time. And all I, all I can tell you is if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world right now at everything occurring and look at what the Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back and he is coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. What do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, he was buried, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross, so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love.
The bottom line is this, heaven and hell are very real literal places and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's eternal torment, it's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am gonna tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven and he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you, I'm imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it, Jesus is coming. And he's coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.